Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, in this uh, session, we are discussing exam style questions, section 1.1 for uh, O level and IGCSE uh, students of physics. And uh, in this uh, first question, we have given a chocolate bar measurements 10 centimeter long, 20, uh, 2 centimeter wide, and 2 centimeter thick and we need to calculate the volume of one bar so we have given uh, volume is equal to 10 centimeters 2 centimeters and 3 centimeters we multiplied this all and eventually this volume is appears as 20 into 4 so this is 40 centimeter cube this is the resultant centimeter cube the volume we have obtained and uh, in the part b how many bars uh, each 2 centimeter long 2 centimeter wide and 2 cm thick have the total volume. So, this uh, small chocolate bar is equal to um, 2 cm into 2 cm into 2 cm means 8 cm. So, this is the chocolate, small chocolate bar has a volume of uh, 8 cm. Uh, thick have the total volume. So, this uh, total volume is given as 80 cm, the big volume uh, and uh, we have to find that how many small chocolate bars uh, is equals to one long, uh, long chocolate bar. So this long chocolate bar has a volume of a 40 centimeter small chocolate bar has a volume of 8 centimeter cube. So by the division of this long chocolate bar by the small chocolate bar we can get the ratio. So the number of small chocolate bars uh, is equal to volume of a small chocolate bar is equal to 400 volume uh, centimeter cube. So, it's how many small chocolate bars is equal to one long, long chocolate bar is equal to number of a small chocolate bars into volume of a small chocolate bar is equal to one volume of long chocolate bar. So, yes. so this number of a small chocolate bars is equal to uh, one long chocolate bars volume divided by volume of small chocolate bars. So, this 8 centimeter cube would appear in the denominator. So, this number of small chocolate bars are this. So, if we multiply this 5 into 8 centimeter cube, it becomes 40 centimeter cube. So, one long chocolate bar is equals to uh, is, is equivalent to 5 small chocolate bars. So, the 5 small chocolate bars is equal to one long chocolate bar. In part C, the pendulum makes 10 complete oscillation in 8 seconds calculate the time period of the pendulum. The number of oscillations 10, time taken 8 centimeters. So, the time period of the pendulum is 8 seconds divided by number of oscillations is 10. So, so the time period is 0.8 seconds. A pile of uh, 60 sheets of paper is 6 centimeter high. Calculate the average thickness of the sheet of the paper. So, the 60 uh, sheets of paper's thickness is given as 6 uh, millimeters. So, average thickness of the sheet of the paper is has to calculate the average thickness of uh, sheet of paper is equal to 6 millimeter divided by 60. So, this is 0.1 mm. Uh, calculate how many block of ice cream each 10 centimeter long, 10 centimeter wide and 4 cm thick can be stored in a compartment of freezer measuring 4 cm deep, 40 cm wide and 20 cm high. So, how many block of ice cream can be stored in the compartment of the freezer we have to find this and the volume or the dimension of the ice cream is uh, dimension of the ice cream is given. This. this is the dimension of the ice cream and this is the dimension of the freezer compartment. So, the volume of the dimension of the ice cream is 10 into 10 into 10 into uh, this is 4, 4 centimeters. So, this is uh, 400 centimeter cube and the volume of the compartment of the freezer is uh, 32,000 centimeter cube. So, we have to divide this 30 2000 centimeter cube by this 400 centimeter cube to, can, uh, to obtain the number of the ice cream that can store. So, 
we are dividing this by this one so we have obtained 80 so 80 ice cream may be stored in this uh, freezer compartment if measurements are very accurate a perfect container has a 6 cm square base and contains water to a height of 7 cm as shown in this figure and uh, this is 7 cm height this is 6 cm and this is 6 cm this the base is a square shape and the height is a rectangular shape so this is a cuboid shape and the base is a square so we have to calculate the volume of the volume so base area is 6 cm square and the height is 7 cm so we multiply this base area with this height so this is the area of the water the volume of the water that contains so this is the base area and this is the height so the volume of the water is uh, 252 cm cube so we multiply this so a stone is lowered into the water so as to completely cover the water rises to a height of 9 cm so we have to put some stone in it so that stone is fully covered within the water and the water level rises to 9 cm in that case calculate the volume of the stone so enter the stone into the water completely covered and uh, the length of the container rises to 9 cm so volume of the container becomes 36 cm square into 9 cm so if this is 324 cm cube the volume of the stone is equal to volume of the container, uh, container uh, with water and stone minus volume of the container without uh, with water only or without a stone so with water so this is uh, 324 cm cube uh, water plus stone and this is only water and the difference is 72 cm so the volume of the stone is 72 centimeter cube because this uh, this much water has been displaced by the stone so by the dis this is the displacement water displacement by the stone uh, is obtained as a 72 centimeter cube so state the standard unit of the length and time the standard unit of length is meters and uh, unit of time is second the measurement uh, is stated as this millimeter state the number of the significant figures here we have three significant figures one two five so where one is the most significant and five is the least significant we give the expression for the area of a circle so this area of a circle is pi r square the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r similarly the volume of a cylinder is pi r square h we here the r is radius and h is the height so here simply r is the radius this is the r is the radius radius square this is area of the circle we are in the fifth problem we are, what are the readings on the micrometer gauge in figure given below uh, one and two so this is figure one where we can see that the measurement is uh, crossed uh, this is one this is two two units have already crossed but this half is not crossed so this small divisions are in uh, are 50 so this from here to here is 50 so this uh, completes this rotation on this we can see that the rotation is at 31 so uh, on micrometer we have two completes and the remaining is 331 so this is 31 so this uh, small units is uh, 0 0.01 this measurement the fractional measurement is 0 0.01 and there are 31 uh, units crossed so this 31 multiplied by this 0 0.01 and this is this is 2 has already crossed so this 2 mm plus 31 into 0 0.01 is equal to 2.31 mm so this is 2.31 measurement is available on this 
a sprue gauge. So, because a sprue gauge uh, measured in millimeters, so it's also or this is a part is in terms of micrometers. So that's why it's also called micrometer sprue gauge. So here we have uh, fourteen. This five is crossed, so fourteen point five already crossed, and we are uh, heading toward the zero. So this is forty five, forty six, forty seven. So we have already reached forty seven, very close to the complete rotation. So this is forty seven. So fourteen point five plus forty seven into point zero one. So this is point four seven. So this is fourteen point five into plus point four seven. So fourteen point nine seven. So this is going to complete the fourteen. So it's um, heading toward the fifteen. So rather than fifteen mm, we have measured this fourteen point nine seven mm. So this is very important. Uh, this may be asked in the final exam. Uh, select the which of the following quantities is a vector. Length is a scalar. Temperature. Is a scalar, force is a vector, time is a scalar. The two forces, five newton and twelve newton, acting at a right angle to each other, and uh, using a piece of uh, graph paper, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force graphically. State the scale you use to represent each vector. You will need a protractor to measure the angle and resultant makes with. Five newton force. So we have uh, maybe used a scale of one newton is equal to two centimeters. So this five uh, newton becomes two point five centimeter, and this uh, twelve newtons becomes six centimeter length. So this six centimeter length, and this is two point five centimeter length, and this uh, uh, six centimeter may be placed here, and we can get the resultant. This we uh, we draw the line. Or a vector from here to here, resultant vector, and we can take the measurement by the ruler, and it will eventually appear as a uh, 13 uh, or 6.5 centimeters. So, which uh, may be resolved or may be uh, rescaled uh, to obtain in terms of newton. So, if this is 2.5 and this is 6 uh, centimeter. So this would be 6.5 centimeter, which is equivalent to 13 newton. And we have solved this same problem with the with the uh, Pythagoras theorem. This is a right angle triangle, and uh, right angle triangle Pythagoras theorem. This is square. This is square is equal to this is square. So the square of this, square of this, and the under root is equal to this. Force. So uh, resultant force is equal to 5 newton square plus 12 newton square is equal to this. 169 newton square. 1 uh, 169 and we take out the square root and this is uh, 13 newton so this uh, force is 13 newton and this is perpendicular upon base tangent and from this we have angle 67.5 so direction is uh, is making angle with this uh, 5 newton force so this is a graphical method may also be used by using a protractor or a ruler or a sharp pencil so that's all from uh, section 1.2